I might get this as off topic. It's, it's not directly linked to graphics, but something. Um, so, uh, yeah, last year I participated in a project to educate high schoolers in computer stuff, like uh, from the point where how a computer works to web and HTML and CSS to starting to programming. Uh, I have my friend here, Renier, who was also participating there. Um, the URL of the project is this. In fact, it's uh, about uh, uh, three months of weekly encounters. They had a final project to present, and there were about 10 to 12 young people participating. And they all decided to, to make uh, a, 2D, uh, a 2D game, uh, a small game. I taught them a Python programming language. But then it was up to me to coordinate the creation of uh, four or five parallel Python games with one encounter a week. So uh, what I did was talking to them, see what their ideas for doing was, and get a, have a common code base to hold all of it. So, um, so that's it. Um, okay, I wanted to talk there again. I came up with something that's about uh, right about now about 1,300 1, lines of code. It's a uh, very hacky, buggy, and it could get improvement. If someone wants to make a game on it or use it in another education project. So this is why I brought it here. Because if someone interested in that, I could retake the project. I basically stopped developing this since December because uh, I'm not using it anymore. Um, let's get here. So, um, this is the code you need to get something working on the screen. Uh, I talked to Ali about it, he was involved in a similar project. Uh, the metric here is that this coding is not that fit to teaching people how to program, because it involves a lot of magic, but it's a framework that's fit to make larger games, uh, medium to larger games, if it, it's evolving. So what it does, it does some magic, it, it, it picks the, the code class's name, and if you find an image with the same name, it just uh, uses that image, that PNG ping image from, from, the, from the assets here, uh, assets folder. So there's few lines of code. Now let's back to something practical. Can you, can you hold the microphone? So, uh, here we are. My screen is making smaller than projection. Here. So with that code, I have this. I installed it my screen. Here. So, uh, but what, what does this map for the game comes from? That's the part that connects to graphics. Because what, actually, what I do is to create a map in the 2D setting. Uh, sorry, it's a raster image. Yeah. So actually, I have a lot of problem with. This on this large screen. Just, uh, ah, works now. So what I do? Uh, moving things basically in one layer. Uh, scenario is another layer. And I have hard code the, the colors here using the gimp color palette file, which basically uh, basically a uh, space separated file. Thing that I'll show you soon. And this maps directly to game objects. So what happens is that if I have uh, this color palette here. So just uh, this color is the background, the top floor. This is called brick one, brick one, hero. And if I happen to have images in a set, the, a set directory with the same name that this class is, it already loads there. So I can show you here. Um, sorry for that. But, um, So I made a chance, and here we are. Another was changed here is that uh, uh, basically uh, it's the equivalent of adding a brick.ping file to that folder, and this hero.ping file to the folder. But that's some, some extra things here. Uh, it's easy to program uh, things like encounters or, or touching or interacting things on the screen. Just uh, next stage here. So, uh, I think I call 
the box. So go back to code. Yeah. File. Load file. So I have now a green box class. I said it's harder, so the war. Uh, so there are some, some things like this. Documentation or something lacking, obviously, in this project, and it's for some year, but So I have a, a method here on touch. This means when it's touched by another another game object. I didn't bother to test if the other object here is the, the main character that you will function with by the player. And a show text that just pops up a, a box. So with this you can make like eight bit style adventure games like a few lines of code. So running it again. Sorry. It became quite a large map for this demo. So I can go through here. Okay, here's my green box. I just start to share. And if I just paint more green boxes here again. So file uh, revert. Revert. Oh. I should have a green box here. I think I did the version of the Exia file. No problem. Um, okay, just be green. Oh, yeah. I just put a saturated color for easy to match files here. I just spread them. I'm sorry. Okay. And so size one. This layer. I'm struggling with this one. <laughs> I, I don't know why you're thinking here. Should uh... anyway, I uh, have one minute left. Um, no, it's basically two. Should should be painting. But... Okay, well, I just want to have one minute left. Uh, I'll show you an example that you guys have agreed with the engine. So the game is basically layout authorship. I just called. Uh, they they came up with the concept, the art, they, they fetch it from the internet, of course. Um, ah, it's straight here, for right? Sorry. So, actually, they have a game. You have to interact with this character here. He, he tells a story to you, the portraits. And after you interact with the character, you can get out of the map through this side. That also you can do. And so, here you have a, a <coughs> quite complicated map. But behind the scenes, it's, it's triggered by it. It uses uh, a pixel block which tells, okay, this is a track, you can't go over here. And I'll open that right now. Come on. It's not a good tip. The code for that is not large, so it have, uh, basically you, you hard code the, the game history to the final code itself. But it, it's suited to, to grow to large and make sure it has some maps and you can have Quite a good story here if you have a semester log of finishing the program or, or game creation. So, uh, I should go back to the presentation. Time, yes. So, here's the URL. 